Hello everyone and welcome back to 2023 and another year of Solid Ethics. As another year goes by, our Australian economy continues to continually free fall into a depression-like state. Not the brightest information to tell audience as we start off 2023, however you would have surely noticed that the cost of everyday food, clothing, technology, events, alcohol, etc, etc, etc has increased dramatically, leading people to consider options to improve their financial standing. No, I'm not really suggesting to create OnlyFans to sell your body online. Uh, well, no, we haven't reached that point just yet. However, if you're young and thinking of what career you could be in when you're older, or you're an adult looking for changing up your usual nine to five, we have five amazing careers to not only cure your boredom from your retail or warehouse job, but also improve your financial standing. Now these suggestions are not immediate solutions to your financial situation. After all, these career options take years of work and practice and stress and mental fatigue, but as stressful as your first time kissing your crush in high school or the first time driving a car, if you have enough experience with it, you can achieve your professional goals. Or maybe just crash into a parked car. Maybe that's just me. Now for the new existing workforce, there are always difficulties with changing jobs. Not only the financial burden that you might have, but the time capacity to complete any education or training. So if you're usually time poor, not motivated, or, or unable to pay for education, then this is just not only to adapt your personal lifestyle to include this increased workload, but to see if it's the right path for your immediate future. If your financial situation is not looking suitable for the time capacity of education. It might be suitable down the line, or with some adjusting to your weekly schedule, but it'll all be worth it to gain some bad stacks while being in a career that you might love. Now, a typical person would say that being a lawyer or a barrister is a highly sought out profession and highly paid. You'd be right on both those parts. However, a company secretary that you would think that'd be below those careers actually trumps both those careers. Earning an average of 342,500 or 270,708 after taxes or 4,187 a week. They provide legal, administrative, and clerical support, keeping the company profits and revenue in check and extremely high, ensuring the fat investors and rich lawyers continually get their pay. No wonder they're getting paid more than the people arguing in court. Company secretaries usually have a professional qualica qualification in business, law, accounting, or public administration. Normally, company secretaries in real life aren't the types of secretaries that explain in flicks like 007. They actually have plenty of influence and say within a company. So with plenty of work, you could say that you are part of the 1% of highly paid Australians. The next profession would be one of the more unknown professions that is known about in the medical profession. Yes, surgeons and pharmacists get paid well, but have you ever heard of a, and forgive me if I say this wrong, anesthetist? No? Well, let me explain. An anesthetist are medical doctors who specialize in the administration of medical treatments to patients for before, during, and after surgery. Alongside anesthetics, anesthetics, oh my God, forgive me again, care for patients undergoing non-surgical procedures. They assess, diagnose, and perform these administrative actions to save lives, something not everyone can do. Don't think this one is easy to get into either. You will need the following. Graduate with a medical degree, typically taking between four to six years. Complete internship at a credit accredited hospital. Gain administration from your relevant state or territory administration authority within five years graduation. Finish your residency at an accredited hospital. Undergo five years of specialist training with the Australian and New Zealand College of Anesthesiologists. Practically, with all of this education and experience, you're practically a walking chemist. One wrong drug, however, and you risk someone else's life. Anesthesiologists earn $386,065, which is roughly $4,647 per week. They are worth every cent, but the risk matches the pay. So choose wisely if you want to pursue this career. Mum said when you grow older, you can become whatever you want to be. However, what she forgot to mention is that dreams are exclusively for the rich, the rich and powerful. Your mum doesn't know anything, but what if you can invest in someone else's dream and make a profit off that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've come to the right career. Investment directors, or also referred to as fund managers, help clients get the greatest return 
on their financial assets. You have to perform financial and business analysis to determine the correct approach. Practically, you're the guy who makes the decisions that the yes men below you graciously accept and proceed to action. Another key leadership position in the company, uh, some, obviously similar to what we talked about previously, you will guide the business, business towards the best practices while having money baths in your New York high-rise apartment. Investment directors working in the financial sector earn $300,000, working out to be $194,333 a year, a tax or $3,700 a week. This is one of the easier pathways to undertake as a career. On this list, with a simple certificate or diploma, you can help. You can actually get your start while getting involved in these business decisions. However, a bachelor or master's degree makes you stand out from the crowd. Now, do you prefer to get out and about, explore what this land has to offer, and take all Australia's natural resources without your employer paying a goddamn cent? Well, if you're an environmental terrorist at heart, you would love a career in constructing mines, organizing daily mining activities, and generally getting paid Bitcoin for directly contributing to the decline of men's and women's health by inhaling those goddamn toxic gases. Then again, you've come to the right career of a mining engineer. Work in the old coal mine, gold mines, and more, you would oversee the planning, construction, and evaluation of the site, performing exciting tasks such as feasibility studies, mining design, team leadership, and team management. After three to four years in an engineering degree, you would then get another two to three years of on-job experience. Then again, you land your dream job. You would then climb the rigid and often unfair corporate ladder, excuse my voice, I'll change it now, to get to this position. They earn an average of 184,000. Not a bad gig for practically being an assistant store manager of, of a supermarket in comparison to, to the retail space. If you wanted to act like a diamond mine profiteer, like in the movie Blood Diamond, without all the violence and war, uh, this would be a perfect job for you. Then again, uh, maybe not. Toxic gases is uh, not really good for uh, people's health, hey? Do you like numbers? Do numbers intrigue you? Do you love just getting all hot and bothered by huge mind complex equations that would shock the everyday man? Well, we unfortunately aren't talking about mathematicians getting off to formulas over here. However, quantitative analysis or quant. Nerds! Nerds! Deal with plenty of numbers and more importantly, get paid well doing so. A quant job works with numerical data to produce important business decisions regarding financial and risk management problems by analyzing financial data and business reports. Being good with numbers in high school used to be nerdy and unpopular to everyone else around them. Now these people who excel in math, IT and statistics are at practically nearly the top of the food chain. To follow this career pathway, you must have expertise in quantitative finance, skills in computer programming, proficiency in productivity software and have strong research skills alongside the traditional bachelor's degree focusing on business statistics. Jeez, that's a lot. This career is definitely an easy one to make for most people. However, for many of those people that don't have the skills that really come naturally to them in terms of math, uh, practically all this stuff leads to years of learning and personal development to lend themselves this career job. Quick math doesn't really come quick. Boom! Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. Now we've come to the end of the video, we have discussed five of the best paid careers in Australia. Has this gotten you towards any specific pathway or job that you'd like to pursue? Could you see yourself in any of these careers? Let us know down below in the comments section. Uh, personally, for myself, any leadership job um, in an office is practically a good start. Then climb that ladder or change different businesses. Because uh, obviously that's the best pathway if you're knocking upwards. You control your destiny, people especially in the workplace. See you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, sub, favorite, promote, vote, um, clap your hands, do the hot scotch, do all that good stuff. We'll see you guys in the next video. Um, peace out, enjoy.